if you have seen the last video on GANs, it may have created an illusion that everything is super easy. But when you sit back and train them, they can be a pain in ass. Especially if the dimensions of the images are larger or the batch size is not proper, the stability of generator is extremely fragile in most of the scenarios. So today, we are going to present an extremely well written paper by Martin Orjowski, Somit Chintana and Leon Bordeaux from Facebook Air Research Group. I am also impressed by blogs written by Vincent Herman and Alex Serpin. The paper starts off with a topic which touches almost every machine learning enthusiast, that is, probability distribution. How do we learn it from a given set of data points in 1D? If you are an Andrew NG student, then this blackboard image is very hard to erase. Yep, it's nothing but maximum likelihood estimate. You take a Gaussian, wiggle its mean and variance a bit so that it sits right on top of the data. Now mathematically, this adjustment of parameters is based on maximizing this log likelihood terms. This is same as minimizing KL divergence between the real data distribution and the parametric probability distribution. Now wait, what is KL divergence? What's all this? Real data distribution is the original distribution of the data. This is what we want to learn. The parametric probability distribution is like the puppeteer trying to adjust its parameters so that it represents the real distribution. The KL divergence represents a non-symmetric distance measure for finding out the closeness between the real and parameterized distribution. The simplest way to look at it is cross entropy minus self entropy for real distribution. Now minimizing this scale divergence is same as maximizing log likelihood. The proof is given in the link shared in the description. Now there's a big problem with both minimizing scale divergence and maximizing log likelihood. The hint is that it has something to do with the log terms. Any guesses? When our crafted distribution is far off from the real one, the log terms for the samples of real data become infinite. So the trick is to add the noise in the crafted distribution so that it's not close to zero anywhere. But there's one more problem with this curve. A 32 cross 32 image has 1024 dimensions. Adding noise term in all these dimensions, isn't it a really stupid idea? And come on, let's admit it, that there's a low level representation out for these high dimensions. So can we exploit this fact to leverage the process of learning the distributions? Absolutely yes. That's where the generator pitches in. We try to learn the parameters such that the generated images can belong to the distribution of images in higher dimensions. We could also learn the distribution of latent spaces such that Images with similar features are closer in latent space. An awesome way to do this is via variational autoencoder. The trick is to introduce random shifts in latent space and at the same time keep learning the mean and variance of encoded vector. But anyways, for WGANs, we are more interested in tweaking the generator which means we got to learn the mapping. Now unlike variational autoencoders, WGANs use a different trick to do so. Instead of latent space, it focuses on parameters such that the smooth changes in parameters lead to smooth changes in output distribution. Mathematically, it means that if theta1 and theta2 are close, the distribution p theta1 and p theta2 should be close. Does it ring some bells? Well, that's the definition of continuity in general. But please mind, this is not the textbook continuity of a function. This is the continuity of distributions which we are talking about. In some ways, what we are saying is that slight changes in parameters or theta should not lead to drastic changes in the distribution. But how do we measure the change in distribution? We need a distance measure for that, right? This is precisely what motivated the research group to dig deeper into the distances between the distributions. The paper takes a simple example of parallel line distributions in 2D to explain the significance of distance measure. Let's say that p of 0, z is a uniform distribution across the y dimension where the values lie between 0 and 1. Now if we parameterize the x dimension then we get a host of parallel distributions represented by p of theta, z. Now to measure the distance between p of 0, z and p of theta, z 
is what we are interested in because then we will understand that how small changes in parameters affect the original distance measure. The problem with most of the popular distance measure is that they fail miserably if the distributions don't share the support or don't overlap even a tiny bit. The distribution may be very close like these two parallel lines but all these distance measures will fail to recognize it. Does this mean that everything that we studied like Kiel divergence, Chin 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 and divergence are only great for 1D? In a way yes, because in 1D they are forced to share the support to some extent, but not anymore for multidimensional distributions. In our example, Chin 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 and divergence, scale divergence, total variation, all are discontinuous. Let's look at total variation distance. It is the maximum change between the distribution's value at any point. But as I said earlier, there is no common support or common domain point and hence this distance is always 1 until both the lines are coinciding when it suddenly drops to 0. This investigation led us to Earth Moore's distance, a classic distance measure which has its roots in transport theory. It's a term coined by a French mathematician Gaspard Mondé in 1781. This concerns with the optimal allocation of resources. Let's say that we have made a left-leaning triangle out of bricks. But then your manager comes and says, Hey, you need to make it right-leaning. Then what will you do? The minimum amount of work required to rearrange is what we call earth movers distance. If you are moving the bricks from top left to top right, then the work will be equal to total width of the distribution. This was formulated by Monge, but even to know that the solution exists, it took around 220 years. It was a famous Russian fella named Kantorovich who reformulated the problem a little bit different. He says, look, let's observe a mysterious joint distribution between source and target. So, in a way, if you take the marginals, you should get the source and target distributions. So if we add up the rows, we get target. And uh, if we add up the columns, we get source. Let's look at Euclidean distance measure between source and target domain points. Now, each point in this distance is telling us about the work done if one unit of probability mass is moved from source to target. If we multiply this mysterious joint distribution, with the distance required and then sum it all then we have one measure of work required for transporting bricks or matter or whatever from A to B. Here's where the transport plan swoops into the picture. This mysterious joint distribution is the transport plan. It is an arrangement of values in the boxes such that the marginals are maintained and there's a mad rush to be best of all possible transport plans, which requires minimum work. So, if the transport plan has values far off the diagonal, then it's probably a bad plan, because the work done will be higher and equal to the magnitude of vertical distance from the diagonal. You see how smartly Professor Kantorovich formulated the problem? Let X be rasterized version of transport plan. If we concatenate the rasterized version of source and target distributions, then we get something like B. Now, let A be a binary matrix which is cherry picking the values from X such that they sum up to the distribution values or B. Now this A is just marginalizing the distribution across the row and columns to obtain P real and P theta. If we consider C as the rasterized version of Euclidean distance matrix, then minimizing C transpose X is equal to minimizing the overall work. But for now, I think I need some strong Russian vodka to digest this. This paper gets even more interesting as it touches the core of optimization here, which is primal dual problem. So the dual of the problem is a clever trick to reformulate the minimization problem as a maximization problem and vice versa. So the new way of writing Earthmore's distance involves the terms of the distribution and leaves us the freedom to choose the appropriate kind of Y. This Y, if broken into F and G, can further simplify the problem 
and you can dream this fng as function over x this all is subject to constraint that a transpose y is less than c at the diagonal points at the distance the sum of fi and gi is zero and in this optimization we want to make both fng as large as possible this is only practical if fi is equal to minus gi and uh, if you make this for all i's then we get that f should be equal to minus g otherwise it will invariably violate the constraints this is kantorovich rubinstein's duality anyways the final statement after the circus of mathematics is that maximizing the following term containing source and target distribution subject to the constraint that the slope of the multiplicative functions are less than 1 yields us earth moves distance this local constraint over slope is what we call lipschitz conditions revisiting our parallel line distribution example if we consider the earth moves distance then unlike tangent chain and divergence and total variation there won't be any sudden jump by the change in the distance at theta is equal to 0 and we will also be able to differentiate almost everywhere armed with this theory let us define generator and critic for w gans the generator is as that the earth moves distance is minimum while the critic is estimating the distance between the real and parametrized distribution which is nothing but the max of the objective function under the constraints so the critic is telling look under these constraints which are formed by lipschitz conditions within the playground of the lipschitz constraints What is the maximum difference I can find between the expectation of the function for real and parametrized distribution? This is the dual of the original minimization problem, if you recall. Now, this maximization is the dual of the original minimization problem that we discussed earlier. These Lipschitz constraints are enforced by clipping the weights of the critic to lie within a fixed range. Now, critic is not discriminator as such, because it is not trying to separate labels. it is just finding their vasarian or earth moves distance this is pretty cool because the critics output is meaningful distance measure so when we are training w gans we keep tweaking the critic until it converges and only when it is done we meddle with the generator this is done for multiple reasons first of all when we say that the critic has converged then it means that the earth moves distance is properly computed and hence the gradients of this generator will be reliable second of all it gets rid of the classic mode collapse problem that's because before the generator is tweaked we give the discriminator sufficient time to converge and estimate the new distance i am so glad to make the video on this wonderfully written paper tell me your favorite gan paper in this comment section so stay tuned and keep reading such beautiful math papers And don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Crazy Muse.